that's how this works. The chart can still help us, the calculator can still help us. But there's this slick little thing called slide and divide that can help us if, if there's a number in front of x squared. And this is the only time I need to use it. But the diamond itself won't work on this. So here's, here's how this works. If you have a number in front, we're going to take that and we're going to slide it to the end of our expression and multiply it like I've got written over to the right. So to get from here to here, what I literally moved the 3 down to the end and multiplied it. 3 times 8 is 24. So it changes the way my problem looks for now. Once I get that slid down there, now it's like what we've been doing for like the last two days. I'm going to do my diamond. So that number on the end is the number I'm going to multiply. The number in the middle is still the one that I need the numbers to add up to. So I still go through that process. And again, whether it's the chart, whether it's the calculator, whether it's your brain, okay? We still are going to go through it that way to get the two numbers on the sides like we have before. So you're like, okay, so do I just write that down and I'm done like I was before? Not quite. Because remember, the name of this process is slide and divide. We did the slide part. We haven't done the divide part yet. So there's one last part to kind of deal with on this. So here's how this is going to work. My last job, once I get this into place, is to take the number parts that I got, the 12 and the 2, and divide them by what? The 3 that I slid at the beginning. So I took the 12, I divided it by 3. I took the 2, I divided it by 3. If it goes in nice, 12 divided by 3 does go in nice, it's 4. I just leave it. But if I go to plug it in and I try to divide it, so like for instance here, I try to do 2 divided by 3, and I get the infamous decimal. Then I don't leave it as 2 over 3. Whatever this denominator is, I slide it back to the front of the problem. And that's where this is coming from. So whatever's in the denominator, back to the front it goes. And now I do have the answer. So there's, there are some pieces that are a little trickier with this. There, there can be. But it gets us back to the diamonds, which are something that some of you have shown me over and over and over you know and that you understand. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to try this on a couple here. I'll get you started on some of the homework ones too. And then we'll kind of take a look ahead at what's going to be going on tomorrow and into next week. So again, if I see a number in front, we're going to swing that back over to the end. So this will just become plain old x squared. But that 2 that I swung down, I'm going to multiply. So 2 times 15 is 30. So I'm always going to do that first step to slide and multiply. Once I get here, now I'm just doing the diamonds like we've been doing. So a little side work here. The number on the end is the one I'm going to multiply to. The one in the middle is the one that we add to get. And my job is to figure out the two numbers that work for this. But remember, there's always clues in here to help you with some parts of it. For instance here, okay, I'm multiplying to get a positive. So what do I know? I know that both my numbers are positive or both of them are negative. That's the only way I can get a positive number when I have a product. So here, if I add to get a negative, I know these both have to be negative. So my only job left now is to figure out what multiplies to 30 and adds up to 13? Hmm. Uh, let's see here. Multiply to 30, add to 13. I don't have my chart handy, so let's, let's play with the calculator here. Let's try dividing some small numbers in here. 15 and 2. Now, if I could subtract that, it'd be awesome. But 2 plus 15 isn't 13. That's too much. So, okay, i, I got to try one more here. Maybe the next one will get me the hookup. Oh, 3 plus 10 is 13. Okay, let's see if this works. I owe somebody 10 bucks. I borrow three more. I owe them 13. Negative times negative is positive. Awesome. So I've got my side pieces, which lets me do what's called my factored form. So 
So once I'm in my factored form, my last step, because I already did the slide, is to divide. So the number part, I go ahead and divide by whatever's out here in the front. If it goes in nice, 10 divided by 2 is 5, so that goes in nice. I just go ahead and simplify it. If it doesn't go in nice, like if I do 3 divided by 2, and I'll pop it up here just so you can see. 1.5. Yeah, I can't put 1.5 in there. So if it doesn't work, I just swing it back to the beginning, and I'm done. So to be perfectly honest, the only part about this that's longer than what we did before is once we do the diamond, we just divide and we're done. So it's not like there's a bunch of extra steps here. It's just something to kind of keep life a little bit simpler for us. So let's see here. Slide her down to the end. Ooh, big numbers to play with this time. Okay. This one may take playing a little bit more. So multiply to negative 75. Add them up to negative 10. Okay. Well, I know with multiplying with a negative, I have one of each sign. I also know because when I add them, I get a negative. That negative is going to be the bigger number. So now the question becomes, what are the two numbers, though? Uh, let's see. I see tens and fives. So that kind of makes me think that a five might be the best way to go here. Let's try this. 75 divided by 5. 15. Now I got a positive and a negative, which means they'll subtract. I think this is going to work. Let's try this. Bigger number would be 15. Smaller number would be 5. If I owe somebody 15 bucks and I pay him five back, okay, I owe him 10 now, that's cool. 15 times five is 75, and negative times positive is negative, okay. And again, the chart would do the same thing for me. So I look and I go, okay, so x and the minus 15, x and the plus five, We check here again. Oh yeah, I can't circle that. I gotta do the divide part. Divide the number. If it goes in nice, awesome. 15 divided by three does, it's five. I mean, lots of fives here. And then finally we get to here. Five divided by three, I don't think that's gonna work out for me. Nope. So the three gets to slide back to the start. That's how slide and divide works. Now again, the only time you have to go through that extra step is if there's a number in front of x squared. If it's plain all x squared, no big deal. We just you know, keep doing it the way it is. So to kind of get us a little bit of a run here, what did I put on here? I put 10. Let's do a couple of these, just to make sure. How about 4 looks kind of interesting. And again, like we've been doing on these, we'll turn them in whenever we have them set and ready to go. All right, slide and divide. Here we come. Slide my 5. Five times 12 is 60. All right, let's see here. Multiply to 60. Add to negative 23. Let's see, what do I know? I know if I multiply and get a positive, the signs are the same. If the signs are the same, but I add to get a negative, they both have to be negative. I know that part. 60 and 23. Eee. Um. Is 30 and 2 going to get me to 23? No. How about 3? 
Is 20 and 3 going to get me to 23? Yes. 20 and 3. So, x minus 20, x minus 3. And again, don't forget that last part. It's called slide and divide for a reason. Got to do the divide part. If it goes in nice, great. If it does not go in evenly, well, we just swing it and get it on out of there. Ready to roll. And again, with this, it's like anything else. The more practice you get, the better off you're going to be. Got one more thing on the back here, and then we will chat about the direction we're going to head here. Um, let's go to number seven. Let's move this out of the way. All right, last one. So n squared, 22n, and 40. All right, let's see here. Multiply to 40. Add to 22. And let's see, 40. I'll start dividing by small numbers, see what happens. Oh, 2 plus 20, 22. Awesome. Plus 20. Can I circle this? No, not quite yet. So one last division type problem in here. And if this guy doesn't go in, if I get a decimal when I divide in, we just swing him back to the front. Life is good. So here's what we're going to do with this. Give me one second, I'll get this.